speaker to the podium, teeming with insights to incite us to hold up the truth that is indeed our source of freedom. And I am pretty sure that since he's going on vacation, the assignment will be something that is to last us for the weeks that you won't be. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend John, your time. <laughs> Morning, family. <laughs> While that lovely introduction was happening, please, uh, Manly Nicholson has been replaced by another man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> And I must say, with great grace and savoir faire, he moved over and said, it's all yours. <laughs> happy independence, happy emancipation. They put it together and call it emancipence. Just happy, happy, happy. It's so lovely to see you. And blessings to all those two who join us in consciousness on the World Wide Web. Yesterday, I was in the pharmacy filling a prescription, and I was waiting. I'm always humming to myself while I was humming, this is the land of my birth. And all the old people that were and not so old that were waiting for prescription said this is Jamaica my Jamaica Jamaica there's something else you know we just have this joy within us and it comes forth at the drop of a hat isn't it just wonderful that you know we haven't lost that and I, we must never lose it we must do all we can to preserve that that sense of beauty and joy and worthiness that is the very essence of the Jamaican people. It's the essence of all people, but boy, we really got it, and we're not afraid to show it. So, good morning, good morning, good morning. As Jamaica celebrates our 57th anniversary as an independent nation, the National Dance Theatre Company of Jamaica, which was formed to mark the birth of our nation, is also celebrating its 57th season of dance at the Little Theatre. Now, I have been every year for ever since it started from the inception. And this year I said, oh, I'm tired of the same thing every year, the same thing. I'm not going to bother to go. And a friend of mine um, said to me last Sunday, have you been to the NDCC? It's the best year ever. And this is friend is a most unlikely friend. I didn't even know he was into, into dance. So um, if you live in beautiful Jamaica and you can take in a performance of the National Dance Theatre Company, treat yourself to that. And if you live abroad and they happen to be in your city at any time because they do travel, treat yourself to that experience as well. Um, I started my early life as a, an amateur dancer myself. I, I learned to love dance because I used to watch my parents um, who did ballroom dancing dance as one as if there weren't two people. They would just move across the dance floor, you know, with great fluidity and to my chagrin as a youngster of six or seven, also the expression of intimacy, you know, they would stop and he would dip her and kiss, you know, and I, myself and my brother would cringe. <laughs> you know, we didn't think big people did it. Um, but it was wonderful. And then when I was about eight, seven, eight, they took me to uh, a ballet recital at the Ward Theater and I fell in love with the language of the dance. Um, and then badgered them and I wanted to go to dancing, I wanted to go to dancing, and so I was enrolled with an a Asian Jamaican woman called Madame Sui, um, and she was married to a Russian ballet master called Anatoly, and they are both responsible for the fact that I walk with my heels in and my toes out in what dancers call first position. <laughs> in my teens, I finally joined what was known as the Eddie Thomas Dance Workshop, and for many years enjoyed performing while learning many valuable lessons and forming many um, very wonderful friendships. And these lessons and friendships have served me in the dance of life. And one of the, I believe, the biggest lesson I learned was the lesson of self-reliance. And how it happened was I, when I started, I used to dance at the back of the stage, the back of the, of the, the class so that I could watch all the people that I, I thought were better than I, knew it better than I, and what have you. So I would follow dance, you know, which means that I never really learned any of the dances thoroughly. And then at one class, one rehearsal, um, the artistic director said, John, dance in the front center. 
So as my heart jumped into my mouth, I said, but, 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 but sir, I don't really know, know the dance. He said, I know that. <laughs> and it's time that you do. So why don't you start to rely on your own muscular memory? You've got to trust your body, John, and trust your mind. Now, this was 20 years before I was exposed to the science of mind, but the teaching is the same, eh? So, you know, it's funny, as you go through life, it doesn't necessarily have to be named science of mind. You find when you think back over your life, um, the things that woke you up to, to the expression and the experience of truth, the things and the people um, go all the way back to perhaps your early, early childhood. So that evening at the Little Theatre, I took my first step in the front row on my journey to inner dependence. And I never again cowered in the back of a stage, although sometimes you really feel like, what am I doing out front out here? But it's a, it's a call to begin to, to rely on yourself and to trust that, that intelligence within you which knows and knows what to do and how to do it. And I want to say to the young people in the audience who are not at Sunday school this morning, so thank you for being here, that this is one of the things I want you to take with you, that you can rely on that intelligence. There is a, an intelligence within you that knows um, everything you have heard in class, everything that you have studied, everything that you have read really is there. And when you learn to trust that inner intelligence, you can call it forth and just say, when you go into that exam, everything I need to know is revealed to me at the moment I need to know it. Can we say that together? Everything I need to know is revealed to me at the moment I need to know it. So when we take our first steps, on our spiritual journey. And I've called this encouragement the four steps to inner dependence, to depending on that power and presence within you. And when you take those first steps, perhaps you, 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 you believe that life happens to you, something that happens to you, those early, early, early steps of your, of your journey. And in this first stage, we have a mental set that, that as it happens to us, we need to just try and keep up with it. You know? And if we, if we manage to, then to, to, to weather the storms and the vicissitudes and the ups and the downs and the roller coaster of living, then we're doing all right. Um, but you kind of believe that there's, there's a, a, a being, a god, a, a, a person up there in the skies. And you know, when you pray, you think that if you, you're going to get his automatic voice interface at the heavenly call center. And maybe the call will go something like this. Thank you for calling heaven. For English, press one. For Spanish, press two. For all other languages, press three. Them not have no pat up on it, though. Please select one of, from one of the following options. Press one for requests. Two for thanksgiving. Three for complaints. Four for all others. Now, if you're like a girlfriend of mine who has been praying for a long time for a mate, you press three for complaints. <laughs> and you get, I'm sorry all our angels and saints are busy serving other callers. Your call is important to us, and we'll answer it in the order received. Please stay online, and then you get some music. This is Jamaica, my Jamaica. This is the land of my birth. After a long while, the voice may come back again, and it says, to find a loved one that has been assigned to heaven, press five. Then enter his or her TRN, followed by the pound sign. If you receive a negative response, please hang up and dial error code 666. <laughs> our computers show that you have already been prayed for today, so please hang up and try again tomorrow. The office is now closed until Wednesday morning after the Jamaican independence holiday because Jamaicans insist that the whole weekend from the Tuesday before right through <laughs> to the next uh, Tuesday is a public holiday. So I'm so happy to see so many people in church this morning, actually. That's not on the recording. That's John speaking. Friends, if we're fortunate enough to have discovered truth, then the second step of our journey might well be that we, we begin to believe, and it's a big aha when we find this, that actually we have something to do with what's happening, to happening 
in our lives. But we still somehow believe that instead of life happening to us, we now begin to think that perhaps life happens by us. And some of us think it's passing us by, and if we can just reach out and grab it, you know, a handful, um, we'll be okay. So th that's, there's that lingering still, and we still look, you know, we look up to heaven when we mention God, and knock wood. So there are still traces of superstition and disbelief, and perhaps a, a, still a consciousness of unworthiness, that we're really not, some people, born with gold spoon and they seem to be okay. But as life passes me by, um, I'm hoping that I can grab some. So it, we move from life happening to us without any, us having anything to do with it or being a victim to life hang, uh, happening by us. And of course, at this stage, luck and happenstance um, are, are still in our consciousness. As we continue to grow, maybe we begin to attend Science of Mind classes uh, and participate regularly in our spiritual community. And as we do, little by little we learn that we do have the power to create that which we are able to envision and to believe in deeply. If we believe it, we can achieve it. And as we take the third step, we come to accept that we are completely responsible for our own life. We thrill to the realization that we, we are indeed unique, individual expressions of something so divine, so beautiful, so awesome, that we can only give thanks that it is part of our lives and we are part of its, its amazing creation. And th this is when we can, we can truly celebrate who we are. And speaking of celebration, uh, before you leave the sanctuary this morning, I want you to look at the notice board. There's a center spread of one of our members, um, Carl Livingston, who celebrated a 60th birthday with his twin sister. And it's featured in the Observer. So congrats, Carl. And um, that's when you're in truth, you can really celebrate who and what you are, what you are becoming, and what you are giving to the world. So at the stage of the third stage of the third step, you put down the business of good luck. It's not luck. It's what's in your consciousness that's creating what you are experiencing. And this takes us to the fourth step, which is the recognition that of our little human selves, we don't do have the wisdom necessarily to know what is best, but we also know that whatever happens, we can handle it, and that we are co-creating our very existence with God, that we are in partnership with God, creating that which we wish to experience and to express. But friends, here's the thing about our spiritual journey that makes some of us lose faith. You see, the dance of life isn't a straight, straight line, it isn't linear. We weave back and forth through the various stages of spiritual awareness. We have setbacks. We, have, we make quantum leaps forward in faith and in achievement. We go back and forth. Life happening all the time. And we have moved from believing it happens to us to believing it happens by us to believing it happens through us to now accepting that life happens as us. That we are it and that we are creating it in partnership with God. So the simple truth is, your thoughts and your feelings create a mold into which spirit pours itself. Now this happens whether you know it or not. So it, it hap it, you, know, you don't have to do anything about it. it. This is always happening. It just becomes more powerful when you do it consciously. In his book, Creative Mind and Success, Ernest Holmes, the founder of our great movement, gives some clear directions for creating the kind of mold which will bring the results you desire. And I quote, daily, you're going to give the creative mind exactly what you want to happen. You will see only what you desire, and in the silence of your soul, you will speak, and it will be done unto you. You will come to believe that a great divine love flows through you and your affairs, and you will be grateful for this love. It fills your life, it satisfies your soul. You are a different person. 
You are so filled with, act with the activity and courage that when you meet people, they will wonder at your energy. In the course of a few months, you will be a success. Always remember this, life is lived from within outward and never from without inward, end of quote. So friends, how do we pull this together so that we're not on this roller coaster all the time? And the truth is, we use prayer, affirmative prayer, because prayer changes conditions by changing your consciousness. Prayer changes the conditions of your life by changing your consciousness. I recently re revisited the prayer of Jabez. Anybody read the prayer of Jabez? It's in Chronicles 4, uh, verses 9 and 10. Let me just read it for you. Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my borders, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from hurt and harm, and God granted what he asked. End of that Bible passage. Jabez stated his desires clearly and affirmatively, but of course he was praying to an extrinsic God, a God outside himself still. But we can paraphrase the prayer of Jabez in words that are more fitting to our belief as New Thought students. So you, it might, the way you paraphrase it might sound something like this. God within me blesses me and enlarges my consciousness of good, delivers me from the power of any negative condition, and always grants me the good for which I have set my intention. Friends, just think for a moment about the power at your command. When you affirm God within me blesses me and enlarges my consciousness of good, you are actually saying that you have within you all that you need to meet the demands of every day. And this knowledge emancipates you from dependence on outer conditions and other people and situations. You cease to feel frustrated or bound by the world's circumstances, however hopeless they may appear. And there are no circumstances you know beyond God's control. Our challenge then is first to understand that we have this incredible power to choreograph our own lives, to create our conditions, and to change the world around us. Second, to understand how the power works and then to use the power for the good of our world and the benefit of humankind. So then what keeps us dancing in the back row? What has us still cowering behind other people who we seem to think or to perceive have got it when we haven't? Perhaps it is our fear of failing, or it may even be our, our fear of succeeding. You know, a lot of people are, are, are afraid that if they step out there, they'll succeed, and then what? <gasps> Nelson Mandela, in his 1994 inaugural address, quoted these powerful words of best-selling New Thought author Marion Williamson, who is now running for President of the USA, and I quote, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others." Unquote. Let us affirm together, we were born to make manifest the glory of God within us. Together. We were born to make manifest the glory of God within us. Now personalize it. I am born to make manifest the glory of God within me. I am born to make manifest the glory of God within me. And to your neighbor say, you were born to make manifest the glory of God within you. You were born to make manifest the glory of God within you.
you are going to make manifest the glory of God within you. Namaste. Friends, affirmative prayer helps us to shift out of a consciousness of expectation based on fear and attachment to outcomes into a consciousness of expectancy based on love and detachment from specific predetermined outcomes. As one writer puts it, prayer gives the universe a push in the direction we want to go. And the writer gave PUSH as an acronym for pray until something happens push. I want to thank our thriving minister quadrant responsible for culture for their stated intention that everyone who attends this center should become familiar with and fluent in the steps of affirmative prayer. It is this powerful intention that inspired me to invite Reverend Eugene Holden to conduct our master class from October 25 to 27. Reverend Holden has made teaching prayer as a lifestyle his life's vocation. Join us at Jewel Dunn's River Resort and Spa for life is precious. Handle with prayer. It will show you how to come to the center front of your life stage and trusting in the presence of God within you, dance the dance of life. The universe is your audience and it's shouting bravo as it celebrates the victory of your every step. Which brings me to your assignment. You think me forget? <laughs> this being a long weekend. Should you decide to undertake it, your mission is this. This evening, Put on your favorite piece of music. Wear something loose and comfortable. And for a few moments, just breathe in the music. Let it wash over you, and then imagine it filling every cell and particle of your being, starting with your feet and filling you all the way up to the top of your head. Just feel it. Just really see if you can feel the music. Then when you really feel the music, allow your body to respond to it and begin to dance. Dance as if there is nobody watching. Just dance, just move, let the music move you. It is a metaphor for your own life. You can do with it exactly as you wish. You don't have to have been trained in the classical uh, mode. You just need to allow your body to respond to what gives you pleasure. The visionary author, Oriya Mountain Dreamer, calls this moving to the rhythm of your true self. Isn't that nice? I, let's say together, I move to the rhythm of my true self. Together, I move to the rhythm of my true self. In her book, The Dance, she writes, and I quote, to dance, to move gracefully, to receive the grace-filled moments every day, we have to know that we are worthy not because of our hard work or our suffering or our eagerness to be other than we are. We are worthy by our very nature, the same nature that creates and sustains all that is. We are worthy, my friends, by our very nature, the same nature that creates and sustains every part of this universe. In Isaiah 43, we read, and I quote, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Can you not perceive it? Now notice that the verse doesn't say God is going to do a new thing someday. It didn't say maybe next week or next month or next summer. God is saying I'm doing something new in your life right here, right now, right here today at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, right where you're listening to us on YouTube or wherever you are connecting with us. Life is doing something and making something new. Can you not perceive it, my friends? Look inside yourself and see it. For life wants to happen as you. Let go of your old way of thinking and come to the front of the stage and dance. God loves you and so do I. Namaste.